Should I go first? Yeah, you go ahead. Okay. It, yeah. Hi, my name is um, Abdul Sabur Zubair. It's, it's longer than a lot of essay titles, but my grandparents chose that, so I'm sorry. I had nothing to do with this long name. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> You know, when you, when you had nothing to do with your name and everyone calls, it says, you have a big name. Well, I had nothing to do with it. Um, so, <laughs> uh, I'm a student at Valparaiso University, um, uh, trying to act as if I'm a computer engineer, you know, um, and maybe one day acting would lead me to actually become a computer engineer. Um, so, I worked at, Wire, I worked at Wire Lab with Professor White, and um, you, you want to you yeah, start? So, uh, the, the, the overarching purpose of our... The overarching purpose... Uh, of our project uh, was to ease construction and development of uh, for downlinking data from uh, LEO satellites. So elaborating on what Gerard uh, said, we want more users to downlink data. Um, and how do we get more users to downlink data? We build more ground stations. Or we send more satellites up, but that's absurd. Um, so how do we get more ground stations? Uh, to, uh, how do we get more ground station on Earth? We increase the ease of constructing a ground station under the SADNOX project. So what, what increases the ease of constructing, like constructing a ground station or build, setting up a ground station on the Earth? There are three factors that decide the ease of, you know, uh, for setting up a ground station. Cost, performance, and constructability. Um, so cost is the number one factor. Uh, we, um, under the SADNOX project, a lot of ground stations have rotators, uh, rotator antennas, and those are very expensive, so not a lot of people can afford it. We want to bring the price down so that you know, a normal person can afford it. So for that reason, we chose omnidirectional antennas, and we, um, we gave them like an equal condition, like same coordinates, same source, like the satellite, so that we can compare their performance, and that's what the, our, the entire test is all about. It's still going on. We, we have... Um, for now, we have less data to talk about, but part of that whole project was to build a QFH antenna that you know, we're going to talk about. Yeah, so construction consisted of, firstly, um, uh, designing the, the, the helix uh, in which uh, we, built, we uh, cut two 10-inch rods, which uh, were, were um, threaded to uh, four aluminum uh, slats, and then those were twisted using those rods to, to get the, the, the helix. Um, you, you could check it out across the hall. Um, and then the wiring was done at the feed point here, um, where you, you had two of the wires co connected through, through a phase line, a 90 degree phase line, uh, to the uh, 90 degree, I guess, um, uh, uh, helix. And then um, at least you talk about the balance. So, um, you know, we followed um, an, an article written uh, on how to construct like a QFH antenna, and that article uh, in, in itself included like some impedance matching techniques, and this guy chose choke balance uh, for impedance matching. So we did as he wanted us to do. It's, uh, so we turned the wire around, LMR 195, uh, for in, like an inch width. Um, and um, yeah, so that's, that's the impedance matching technique, you know, that we used. Uh, to match impedance as much as it could be matched with, the, with that technique. Uh, so this is a look at our uh, uh, VNA plot. You can see uh, that we designed with the goal of, of resonance at about 146 megahertz. So uh, it came out fairly nicely. You see the, the, the dip right where we wanted to add um, with the return loss of about minus 8.5 dB. So um, we got, with, with the VNA plots, we got the um, uh, CSV file for, you know, the, the return loss, the real part of the impedance. Oh, well, I mean, impedance is real and also reactance, but like um, resistance and impedance, um, and then phase um, with it. So um, the, the real part of impedance at the frequency that we wanted the antenna to resonate was 46, which is, I mean, our... Um, all right, uh, and 2.32 SWR. So this is the initial um, data that we got from well, uh, from the VNA plot. And um, what we what our intended goal is to have Linovlad, QFH, Tensile, all in one setting, same coordinates, same satellites, like the source is the same, 
and we can compare that how, which one is actually better and quantitatively, not from simulation, quantitatively um, you know, assert that, yeah, this one is better and this one is more cost effective. And at the end, we want to develop a kit that a normal amateur who has no technical experience can install in, a, you know, in his backyard or on his roof and can you know, download data. And that will serve a lot of purposes, including increasing interest for EMF radiation and radio signals. So that's our goal. And that's all. How many computer engineers understand antenna theory? You guys are marvelous. Good job. <laughs>